Both parties have their presumptive nominees, but in a development that few would have actually imagined as recently as January 2021, when Republican politicians condemned the violent attacks by MAGA fans who literally sent, as you see there, politicians scurrying for safety, now one candidate is campaigning in favor of that crime spree. Donald Trump promising to help convicted January 6 rioters, falsely calling them hostages when they go through the justice system, and as the AP reports, Trump's making the January 6th attack a cornerstone of his campaign, lying about it, arguing it's a good thing, and, quote, positioning the violent siege as a cornerstone of his campaign. The AP is nonpartisan, of course. It reports that Trump has used rallies to salute while a recording plays of prisoners in jail for their roles in the Jan 6 attack sing the national anthem. An announcer summons the crowd to honor those criminals, falsely referring to them again as, quote, hostages, while Trump floats the idea of pardoning them. These are extreme lawless positions taken against the U.S. government. All of this echoing the divisions from the Civil War to Jim Crow, when some people, maybe not all Americans, but some Americans and their leaders, openly plot against the federal government. Now, there are some arch-conservative Republicans who argue that Trump's Jan 6 obsession is bad for the country and also bad politics for Republicans. Take President Bush's White House veteran Karl Rove. He has run many Republican campaigns. Many winning ones, by the way. He currently works as a Fox News analyst, which is one of those deals that keeps him off other channels. Although I recently interviewed him and some other Republicans at the Rancho Mirage Writers Festival. I talked to Mr. Rove and former Trump Chief of Staff Reince Priebus and another Trump White House veteran known for her January 6th testimony, Cassidy Hutchison. You can see us there. Now, for Karl Rove, I asked him about January 6th enduring and really now shifting role in this campaign. And he said something interesting. He argues Democrats should actually go even harder at Trump's lawless stance and the vow to pardon what Rove, and you're about to see this, what Mr. Rove calls MAGA thugs, not hostages. I got to tell you, we get to talk to a lot of people, and we try to get sourcing and information from a lot of people, especially those who have served in government when we do interviews. This one was pretty striking. I'm going to share Mr. Rove's new remarks at some length right now for you here, airing on the beat for the first time. If they were smart, they'd take the January 6th and go hard at it. And they would say, he wants to pardon these people who attacked our Capitol. I worked in that building as a young man. To me, the Congress of the United States is one of the great examples of the strength of our, of our democracy and a jewel of the Constitution. And what those people did when they violently attacked the Capitol in order to stop a constitutionally mandated meeting of the Congress to accept the results of the Electoral College is a stain on our history. And every one of those sons of who did that, we ought to find them, try them, and send them to jail. And, and if... And if and one of the critical mistakes made in this campaign is that Donald Trump has now said, I'm going to pardon those people because they're hostages. No, they're not. They're thugs. There were people, some of them had automatic weapons at a hotel in Virginia hoping to be able to be called up. We had people saying, where's Nancy Pelosi? We had people who were, you know, taking desks and sitting at the desk of the Speaker of the House and attempting to, you know, find people in order to bring them to justice and saying to the, to the yelling at the police, kill them, kill them all. And so why Trump has done this is beyond me. If he had said, you know what? I trust our jury system, I trust law enforcement, anybody who assaulted the Capitol ought to be, I mean, he said it once or twice, but now he's got, he's appearing in a video with people who assaulted police officers with an intent to take the Capitol by force. So, you know, look, I, I'm a Republican. I don't want to have a Democrat president, I want to have a Republican president. But we're facing as a country a decision, and you all, everybody gets to make it, as to what kind of leadership we're going to have. And to me, it is a mistake on the part of the Trump campaign to allow the president's impulses to identify himself with the people who assaulted the Capitol rather than people who stand for law and order. Yeah. Very clear rebuke there. Bush veteran Karl Rove confronting MAGA's lawless thuggery, as he put it, shredding 
Republican Party's claim to any law and order. And Rove, as he often does, mixing that with his own sort of political math. He said it's wrong, and he also said it's going to fail for the Republicans in November. We should mention Donald Trump has attacked Karl Rove for other comments he's made earlier this year. This matters both on the substance, as I mentioned, but also clearly the politics. Trump needs to consolidate his Republican base to have any hope of making up his deficit against Biden from 2020. And if he can't keep prominent Fox News conservatives like Karl Rove on his side over this issue, that may matter. Now, I mentioned all the sources we try to hear from when we do our reporting. Taking up Trump's defense on that same panel was the man you see here in the pathway of power, in the halls of power, in the actual Oval Office. In fact, I'm going to leave this photo up for a moment. Both men you see here were with Donald Trump through January 6th, one now completely ostracized after facing the death threats that Donald Trump uncorked against him, former Vice President Pence. The other, Ryan's Priebus, still very much in the MAGA camp. Mr. Priebus also ran the RNC. Also on this panel was a Republican who joined the Liz Cheney wing of the House January 6th committee, you may remember, Adam Kinzinger. So right now I also want to play some more from that same panel, including part of Priebus's Trump defense. It's a group of people that in one way shows the range of potential Republican Party leadership, but also shows how the less MAGA members are habitually driven out. Airing for the first time, here are those highlights. And Joe Biden's message is going to be, I'm not for Trump. We don't want Trump. We can't have the chaos of Trump. Both candidates face the likelihood of losing part of what they had last time around. But they also look at Joe Biden and say, yeah, but the economy is no good. There's crime everywhere. On Biden's side, he's got a problem in that he, first of all, is lacking enthusiasm among black, Hispanic, and young voters. Donald Trump in 2016, he was the biggest middle finger that the American people could find, and they found it. And I actually think that people are more angry today than they were in 2016. For Trump, the problem is, is that last time around, he lost 8% of Republicans and it was 7 million votes short in the popular vote. If he is found guilty in something, even if it's the New York business case, it's going to have a, an effect. This is as high stakes poker as it gets. I mean, if, I think if the president gets acquitted on one of these items, I think it's going to be even, his chances of winning are going to be even greater. The election cannot be won merely among Republicans. If you think that Trump being found guilty by the attorney general's investigation in New York is going to sway the, the independent voters in Wisconsin and Pennsylvania and North Carolina, good luck. Because I don't think it is. Most people uh, don't care about any of these issues. I think you want them to. I think you wish they would. No, but this right, is not right, the right. 19... I'm going to let him finish, this is and not, then you can go. This yeah. is not the 1990s electorate. This is 2024, where division is profit and unity is a loser. If I'd done what he did, we'd be having this in the visitor's room at Fort Leavenworth. <laughs> Quote, division is profit and unity is a loser. Well, you're getting a pretty direct view there from people who have been to the very top and want to go back to the top in the White House with Donald Trump, while Rove again hit that January 6th crime spree. Priebus is insisting most voters are not following these democracy issues the way informed, or as some would put it, elite citizens may. And those primaries do show Trump has not fixed the cracks in his base from the Haley showing that we saw in the early states. One in five are Republicans voting against Trump when he has the only position on the ballot left. You see, those are some important states like Florida. Ohio Republicans saying straight up they don't plan to back him in November. These are the stakes. And there are people who want to lie to you and make it all disappear or become a kind of confusing soup. So when you hear someone like Karl Rove, who, if you've been watching the news for a minute, you might remember was one of the architects of the right-wing Texas Republican Revolution. When you lost Karl Rove, are you on your way to a big coalition if there is a free and fair election? That's one of the big questions. And as for Mr. Priebus, he argues, and we gave him time to make his point, that these are overserved, over-indexed, East Coast elite-type concerns.
that people in democracy in New York and a few other pockets might discuss endlessly, while the vast majority of voters, he says, are focused on other topics. We will find out, but we hope to be informed along the way. Hey everyone, MSNBC has a new and improved app. You'll get real-time alerts and analysis, live blogs, in-depth essays, video highlights, and the best 2024 election coverage. Download the new MSNBC app. Here's how to do it. You tap on the App Store on your phone. You hit search on the bottom right corner. You type in MSNBC. You click on the MSNBC app. You click on get or the cloud icon and enjoy it.